Welcome back. I'm Gary Parr. And I'm Christine Williams. You're listening to the midweek version of Fiber Talk, that twice a week type meet and yet. Yes, yeah. that. We, we do it two times a week, and it's a podcast for people who do needlework. You know, I have such respect because I don't think you're going to filter that out. You're not going to edit that, are you? No, not a chance. No, I'm staying right there. <laughs> <laughs> Staying right there. I, you know, I think of people like Penn Gillette and like Penn Sunday School and Mark Marin and and I think of the reason why they have a million downloads a week, and I think it's because they don't do that. Stumble and fumble and bumble like an idiot, you mean? No, because they edit things. Oh, well, I edit some things, but I'm not editing that. It, mostly the foul language from you. I think that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was a joke, in case anyone didn't get that. I don't yeah. think I've ever heard foul language from from Gary, ever. Happens occasionally. Mm-hmm. No, but, no. I don't think I've ever heard it. Yeah. It's a rarity, I'll say. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. So, you know, that's staying right there at the beginning. I thought that was an excellent opening. Professional. <laughs> Professional. That's right. So, I, oh, yeah, and speak, speaking of all that, my favorite cross-stitch chart of the week is just a text thing. Well, it's a text thing. It looks like a needle that's dripping blood. And the, it's, the, the copy is, stupid, <laughs> stupid people make me stabby. I was cheering. <laughs> I love that. Yep. So, so can we, is that an inappropriate thing to stitch and then hang in your workplace? No. Since my workplace is our home, no. All right. What if it's not your home? Yeah, oh, I think... You're home with your wife. Yeah. Yeah. No, I so. think that's okay because you assume the stupid people are the other people, not your wife. So right. that's cool. Well, I can okay. tell you, I can t- assure you that <laughs> in this couple, nah, I'm the idiot. So, um, <laughs> yeah, no, no, but that's that's a classic. Yeah, you should have that right in your office there. I think. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I'm kind of thinking. Because there, there was, I, I forget what company it was there that had a lot of sort of uh, blue humor type sayings that I was threatening to stitch and hang at my workplace for quite some time. Because at the time I was, my office was in the factory part of it. So you really could get away with that sort of humor. Mm-hmm. Um, and now we've moved into the marketing building where it's, Ew. you know, fancy people. So you really can't do that, but stupid people make me stabby really isn't blue humor. It's just a little aggressive. Right. It's well, like that would be considered a microaggression. Yeah. And if it bothers you, then that suggests you consider yourself stupid. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> so essentially it self selects people into right. your office. Right, exactly. Yeah. You come in back. here that bugs you, then you're stupid, you know? What can I help? <laughs> <laughs> you know oh. you just shrug your shoulders and look at them hey what do you want okay. <laughs> what if what if you so you put the text there but you soften it by stitching like beautiful flowers and things around it nah nah keep the edge see because i think that way it makes it more confusing <laughs> okay right? That'll stop you to think. Okay, I can see that. Yeah. Right. Because this message, which is, you know, kind of a little, like I said, like a microaggression in the parlance of the day. And, but then it's got this beautiful floral, very gentle thing. And then someone would walk in and they don't really quite know what to make of it. Yes. Okay. It see? Kind of on edge. Yeah. 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 Well, there you have it. I mean, that's my new favorite. Stupid, <laughs> stupid people make me stabby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I want to meet the mind that came up with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll get you. Um, uh, somebody asked for in the in the thread. I think it was in Stitch Mania, and somebody asked for the the designer, um, and nobody had posted yet when I looked. But um, as soon as I find out, I'll let you know because it's a quick stitch because it's just. Uh, yeah. Looks like it's just backstitch text and uh, yeah, so you can do that in a hurry. 
and it was mounted in a hoop, so you don't even have to frame it or anything. Just hang that sucker up, and uh, you know, people fly. come in. Yeah. People come in, you say, ah, I don't know if it bugs you. What can I tell you? <laughs> yeah. are, are you stupid? Do you, do, you feel, do, you, do you feel like you're at risk? Yeah. So have yeah. some fun. If you look on Instagram, there's a lot of, it almost feels like there's things that fall into two categories. One are things like that, which are just sayings. And there's a lot of, not political things, but sort of um, very contemporary sayings of the moment, um, things that are pertinent, especially towards women's issues and things like that. Um, and maybe it's just skewed towards what my feed is, and that's, very possible um it's that or it's embroidery that is so intimidatingly good that i, I feel like i should just throw my needle down so <laughs> one of the things that has been coming up is um people embroidering animals that are um so photorealistic oh yeah yeah. Have you seen these? So, uh, oh, yeah. so somebody will send in, you know, if, so if I may, uh, you know, like a, 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 I don't even know what the word is, but uh, um, I do things on commission. So someone will send me a photo of their dog and it's a little Yorkshire Terrier. And if you can imagine like a sort of face on view and I send on in a photo of this Yorkie to, to a person then they will stitch it and then the person will post a picture of half of the photo and half of the stitch thing and you can't even tell the difference. Yeah. It's that spot on. Yep. Yep. It is it is frighteningly good. Yep. Yeah, it, we have a and it's all it's all just long and short stitch and Yeah. It, that's really all it is and it is just really amazing and what I can't figure out i mean it really i mean it takes skill to get the colors right and all of those things but to get all of the to get the transfer right too yeah that's the part i think that's difficult you know how do you get the the transfer of the photo to get the eyes in exactly the right position to get all of the hair in exactly the right position that i would like to know yeah yeah some people are amazing they are uh, well, a lot of people are amazing. I shouldn't say some. A lot of people are amazing with needle and thread. Uh, well, we have a we have a small, oh, four by eight piece that we got at an art fair in um, Scottsdale, Arizona, many years ago, eight years ago, something like that. That is, uh, it's just a grassy field with flowers, and it was a booth full of these things. And you walk in, and you think, oh, these are beautiful photographs, just gorgeous photographs. Wow, How, you know, what talent with a camera. And then you explore it a little bit more, and you realize that these are all stitched. Oh, my goodness. With, you know, or a Asian, I don't know, Japanese, Chinese, I don't know. Uh, but some, some Asian, uh, a couple of women who uh, stitched these, and you can't tell. And you, you pick them up. I mean, you literally have to pick them up and turn them and catch the light just so to tell that there's thread there. And it, it was one of those where Margaret and I just stood there and we just bought one. We, you know, <laughs> this is so good. Yeah. This is so good. We got to have it. And uh, it's still one that we marvel at. But, yeah, some of these people, what they can do with <laughs> some thread and some cloth just blows me away. It really does. I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I don't, I can understand sort of interpretive embroidery, you know? So if you're doing a flower or an animal or something like that, like the Trish Burr birds are yeah, a good yeah. example of that. Yeah. And that's, that's interpretive and it can be realistic and, and even photorealistic, but to literally take a photo and it, it looks like you've just, slap the photo on cloth and stitched it. I, I 
I really want to know what the technique is <laughs> to do the transfer to get yeah. it exactly right, like hair by hair. Yeah. I would love to know what, you know, what goes into making that happen. Yeah, no, I agree. Because, yeah, well, like like a Trish Burr uh, bird. I mean, those are incredibly yeah. realistic, but she's not using you, a photo of a bird. You know? no, well, she may be at, as a starting place. But, but not then on the camera, or not on the cloth. Out. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. No, I know. It's that's that's what's so cool about this hobby is just when you think you've seen about everything you find someone else that's even more amazing and everybody's got a different eye yep yeah you know and and everybody brings a different interpretation of something that's art that's that's the fun thing about art yep. i i think that's why i i like this a little bit better than our old hobby of reef keeping because that's just that was science, right? And and it's animal husbandry and, and doing that. This, everyone interprets it according to their own sort of their own eye, right? And their eye is determined by how they see things, how their brain interprets things, but it's also their experience in life, their mood, how their mood is informed by their past experience so many different things, how, what things please them, what things make them happy, yep. um, you know, what, how, what their training is, all of those things. And everyone has a different idea of what something should be. Yeah. So it, you never, I mean, you give someone like the San Francisco school of design has, um, has a challenge going on now. And I, I'm really excited to see what, the results of that and they've done challenges before and it's not uncommon to, to see that but everyone doing the same sort of challenge you never know what you're going to get because everyone has a different way of thinking about things so yeah. you know I, I i really like that idea because people will make you think differently than you ever thought before about something yeah and that, I, I think that's that's really kind of one of the neatest aspects is you you think you have it knocked and then you see someone else you go whoa oh how could i you know i i would never have thought that and and you just kind of right, sit there in right. awe of them yes yeah right right yeah. and then on top of that there's the technical aspect of it of you know where you right yeah exactly yeah. Expertise. <laughs> so you're you're mastering the 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 technical skill that it takes to execute these things, but then you're also admiring their ability to interpret a design yeah. in a way that's not, not literal. Yep. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. So. Yeah. It's, that's just, it, and it's, 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 it's fluid. That's what's so mu so much fun. It's fluid. Yeah. It's, it, 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 every week to week, day to day, hour to hour, there's always some nuance that makes this different from that. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's fun. It really is. It, yeah, it's the reason you can go to a museum and see the same painting over and over again and right. enjoy it every single time differently because every t time you see the painting, you're seeing it differently because your eyes and your brain are different every time. The painting's the same, right? but the way you process it is different. Yep. So the way you process how you're going to go about a piece is going to be different. And, you know, and, and people who call this a, a craft, you know, it, it, what you just described, uh, it, that's art. That's not craft. That's art. Yeah. 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 If, if you're following a, you know, a, a pro proscribed pattern, then, you know, one could argue that it gets into craft. But if you're going to build something new or reinterpret a piece, then it starts becoming, you know, into the art realm. And, and anyone can interpret any piece anyway. Right. There, just because there's a pattern for something doesn't mean you have to follow it. You know, that, I mean, my goodness, I'm sitting here with a piece of cloth that's, that, that looks like denim <laughs> and, <laughs> and stitching with, with metallic fibers and threads that don't make any sense to do a sampler that's from the 1800s. So, you know, there, there's no rules. Right. Exactly that. Yes. Yep. Speaking of, okay, I got to tell my story. 
So if I sound a little different, it's because I'm not in my normal recording position. If I sound echoey, I'm in an office in a home in St. Louis. Because we, uh, for two weeks now, we're renting a house across the street from our daughter, son-in-law, and two grandsons. And because Mark and I can work, work anywhere, so we just uh, hauled our computers and monitors and everything, and we're just working. So we rented this house. And uh, so part of what comes in the trip is my bike, of course, and all the gear that goes with that, and then all my stitching gear. So the magnifier light stand and the um, stand for my scroll frame, they get all broken down, and they come with uh, the scroll frame and you know stitching supplies so that I can finish up uh, Anasazi's song, No, It's Not Done Yet. And, uh, and then you get going on Sarah Brazier, the sampler. So all of that comes along with clothes and working equipment and paperwork and all those things. And uh, so we get to the house. And, of course, we, we get things moved in. And our little three-year-old, you know, we, we have a three-year-old and, one, and a one-year-old grandsons. So Cooper, the three-year-old, comes over because he has to come over and see where Grandma and Grandpa are staying. And uh, so they're on the floor are all the pieces to the, to the two stands. And uh, so, but first we have to put the seat on my uh, bike. Well, that requires a torque wrench because my bike's carbon fiber uh, frame. So you have to be very careful how you tighten bolts because you'll snap the carbon. So you have to have a torque wrench. So then Cooper wants to know all about the torque wrench and then listen to it click when it's tight enough. And he, so he puts the he puts the socket on and takes it off, you know that whole thing. And then what are all these pieces of wood over here? Well, those are stands. So uh, he helps me put those together. I start the you know each knob, get it threaded on. He tightens it down, and and so we get them all put together. Now every time he comes over, whoever he's with, mom, dad, whatever, drags them over. I helped put those together. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty neat. So, uh, the stands got put together with the help of Cooper, but no stitching has been done in 3 days. But Okay, so, all right, I have a a challenge for you. Oh, great. <laughs> Just what I, I know, need. You, you hate when I give you challenges, but it's really not a challenge for you. Here's what here's what I would love to see happen and I and I have no idea how this is going to work because I don't have grandchildren. So, I've talked before about how I learned how to stitch my very first things were just about Cooper's age. What my grandmother did was take muslin or whatever, you know, garbage fabric was around and an embroidery hoop. And she would trace simple, simple shapes like a bunny or a rubber duck out mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, with a Sharpie on the fabric and just have me do a running stitch around with yarn or something, you know, big giant that little tiny fingers could hold. What if you did that? Because he's seen you. <laughs> but here's the thing, because it's not a grandma doing it either. Right. So right. so he's seen you put a bike together. He's seen you put, a, you know, a stand together. Now, if he sees you doing the stitching, which is, you know, really super fancy, and then you give him something to do, even if he never picks it up, you know, while you're not there, this is now locked in in his conscience right. that this is something that men do. So you're burying something in him that tells him that this is something that, that men that he respects and admires do. Okay. I have to think about that. Yep. Well, I've got two weeks to do it. So I didn't bring yeah. any scrap anything. So, um well, uh, I'm sure know, I can find Hobby something. Hobby Lobby or Michael's and it's, you know, a, a 50 cent hoop and yeah. a little bit of fabric. And, you know, you can draw, uh, you know, a train or, you know, a car or whatever it is that he, you think he'd like to stitch. And then while you're stitching, hey, why don't you come sit over here and I'll show you how to do it and show yeah. him how to do like an open running stitch. Mm -hmm. And you can do it together. Okay. I didn't think about that. All right. That'd be fun. There's plenty because, of needlework stores in St. Louis, so. Um. Yeah, yeah, and you know, big fat tapestry needle, and 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 suddenly that thing that 
is the thing that boys aren't supposed to do right. isn't that anymore the stigma is gone at least for a little while yeah okay good idea oh that was a great band too big fat tapestry needle man <laughs> those guys were really good yeah yeah i have both their albums yeah such a dork thank you so okay uh, we're we're uh here in what three weeks we're going to be at sassy jacks very excited. Nicola Parkman going to be there doing uh, three two-day classes. And we're going to be there for the first two days to do podcasts, videos, whatever. And see Nicola and Kim and see people. They're so, all sold out. See people stitching. See the new sampler that was commissioned for this event. Ooh, probably probably do a video tour of the sampler with Nicola. So, yeah, looking forward to that. So, it, you know, limited number of people can be at Sassy Jacks for this thing, but we'll try to bring to you as much of uh, what's going on there as we possibly can. Uh, yeah. And we're, and we're both going to be there. And there's there's threat by Christine that you may get to see <laughs> our spouses. Yes. But I have to talk Which, to Marga. <laughs> yeah, that's nice that you brought that up before we've actually approached said spouses and right. and asked whether or not they would be amenable to that. Well, mine doesn't listen, so no threat of that. No, mine doesn't either. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. There we go. See, so it's quite safe. <laughs> right. So, you know, well, and and to be honest, I don't know that that many people have even seen our faces either, like our faces. Right. So, so yes, yeah, so so we'll show our faces. <laughs> You'll actually get to meet us as as like human beings with bodies and not just voices. Yes. That's weird. Yep. So that's coming up. Excited about that. Yeah. Road trip. Yeah. Road trip. Yep. Yeah. That's okay, you amazing. sucked me in. Fabulous. Royal School of Needlework, Book of Embroidery. You sucked me in. How awesome is that book? Oh, I'm telling you what. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tell this story. Okay, so I uh, you we talked last week about putting the uh, tape on the edges so you could uh, basically create a slate frame out of your scroll frame. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, and, and Royal School of Needlework uh, Book of Embroidery, the new book, uh, shows how to do that. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, you were gonna send me pictures. You forgot. And no, I okay. In my defense, I sent them, but the wireless coverage in my neighborhood is terrible. Oh, okay. So they're in the ether somewhere. Yes. Threatening to show up at any moment. Yes. Okay. I'll buy that. So I thought, well, okay, what am I doing? Uh, how much is this book? So I looked and ordered it immediately. And then, uh, but I ordered it such that from Amazon that it was going to arrive while we were in St. Louis or while we're in St. Louis. So can't have that sitting at home when I'm in St. Louis for two weeks. So I had it sent to our daughter's house and to, to our grandson. And then I texted her and said, when that comes for Connor, he doesn't care about it. I do. So... <laughs> So we got there, and it was laying on the on the uh, shelf by the entryway uh, when we got to their house. And so I just took it back to the house where we're staying and opened it up and was looking at it. And then over the weekend, Margus says, I don't really care, but how much was that book? And I said... It's very expensive, doesn't it? Yeah, I said it was 27 bucks. She said, <laughs> what? It looks like an eighty dollar book. Yeah, exactly. Least. That's what she thought. She thought I was going to tell her eighty or a hundred bucks. She yep. says. She says that's all for that book. I said, Yeah, that's why I bought it. Well, uh, in addition to what's in it, but I said, Yeah, you can't get that kind of information in one book for twenty seven bucks anywhere. And um, so that book is is um, an amalgam of all the other books that they've published on each of the different styles. So they have a black work book, they have a stump work book, a, a um, Jacobean cruel work book. Each of those individual books were probably, I, I have a few of them. I, I think I have a stump work book and one more. And I probably paid at least 15 or $18 for each of those. 
and I don't have all of them, but I have a couple. So to pay the $27 for that one book, it was, I mean, it was a no brainer. Everyone should own this book. It yes. is a tremendous resource. Oh, and tremendous underscored twice. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, it really is. And not just, even if you're not interested in any of the styles of of needlework that are in there, because there's needlepoint, there's the canvas work that they call it, um, just the basics of how how to lace a slate frame, how to set up a scroll frame, what different needles are useful for different applications, just you know, how to um, frame up a piece, things like that, just basics. All yep. of those things are in there as well. So it's really, it's a really good book. It's one of my favorite new um, purchases. Yeah, with the, with Index, 400 pages. So Yeah, for 27 bucks. For 27 bucks. And you know, beautiful color photos, clear crystal clear stitching uh you know each section uh, talks about the history of that technique and then shows some examples and then shows some stitches and it just goes on and on and and actually i haven't done any stitching since we got here but uh the three or four hours that i've had an opportunity to stitch uh have been spent reading that book yeah <laughs> yeah it's uh yeah i you Everybody should get it. It really is one of those books you ought to have. Um, fantastic. Well, one of the things, yeah, one of the things I like about it as well is that they'll show because a lot of the 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 stitch styles that the RSN teaches are historic styles, right? They right. they have been around for forever. So they'll show pieces that are from the era that the stitch style originated. So they'll show a blackwork piece that was, you know, blackwork was used on garments quite a bit. So they'll show a picture of a shirt that someone wore. But then they'll show blackwork used in a contemporary way. So what I really like about it is they'll show the historic sort of um, utilization of the stitch or, or of the style. But then they'll show a contemporary interpretation of that style and they'll show student pieces using that style as well. So you can see sort of all the, the whole transition, a modern interpretation of the style, the origination of the style and how it started, and then student pieces that were done as part of the training process of the RSN. So, yep. and all of those things together, it makes it really accessible and it gives you sort of a, a really good feeling of the root of each of these different styles of needlework. Yes. So I, I it really, it, I love it. Oh, it's a tremendous book. And I, I'm in the middle right now of reading about black work because it's always intrigued me. And right here in this book, the history, the techniques, everything right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. That's and, Catherine of Aragon that started that. Yes. So, yeah, uh, really. Now, last week I put a link, and I'll just repeat the link to the Amazon, um, uh, to buy it at Amazon. But, yeah, 27 bucks, and if you have Prime, of course, free shipping. And, uh, I mean, you just can't, you can't get 400 pages of needlework expertise yeah. for, for less than that. There's just no way. So, really, tremendous book. Really glad I bought it. You sucked me in, and it was worth every penny. <laughs> it, it is one of my favorite recommendations, and I absolutely love it. Yep. And speaking of black work, now th how's this? This is professional transition right here. Professional transition. <laughs> okay. okay. Speaking of black work, we have uh, posted today. Now I'm doing this without permission. I asked for permission, but uh, <laughs> haven't received it yet. So yes. Victor Victoria Becker posted on Facebook that she had finished Gay Ann Rogers' Queen Elizabeth I, that design. Mm -hmm. And Which, she, put up some, she, she put up some pictures, and I borrowed a picture, and I'm hoping by the – we're recording on Monday, so I'm hoping by Wednesday I'll have permission to use her picture. But uh, So she posted Queen Elizabeth I, 
made a couple of changes. The cap, I didn't understand the hair on the back of the cap, so I didn't put it in. The pearls, I did not couch them, and I placed a couple of strands differently so it would drape more realistically. And then the sleeves, I just love black work, so I covered the sleeves in black work. Right, which actually is not that historically inaccurate because... So Catherine I've learned. Arrogant. So I've learned yeah. from the book of embroidery. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Catherine of Aragon was the stepmother of Elizabeth I. Elizabeth I was the daughter of Anne Boleyn. Both of them. So Catherine of Aragon was the first wife of Henry VIII, and Elizabeth I was the daughter of Anne Boleyn. So. They're all related. And so Elizabeth, Elizabethan style was a little bit later. So the black work would have been the style of a a little earlier. So I'm going to guess, and my husband will probably correct me on this if he actually listened, which thankfully he doesn't. Um, So he's a (laughs) Shakespeare expert. So he, he... he knows the, the this period of time like intimately well. Um, so the the earlier period of time would have been the black work era. So would have been Catherine of Aragon would have been the late 1500s. The Elizabethan time would have actually been more of Jacobean cruel work. So, but but black work would have still existed right so because everything blends together yes. so that's not historically inaccurate at all yes it's gorgeous and i learned from the royal school of neil work book of embroidery that that black work comes from moorish people well and because catherine of aragon was from spain and of course spain had a tremendous moorish influence because of the proximity to africa so there we have it mm-hmm so this thing that this project Queen Elizabeth I the Victoria stitched well number 1 it's a gay Ann Rogers so it's stunning to begin with but wow i mean she literally brought this thing to life it is just it, gorgeous it is it is jewels jewels on top of jewels and beads and uh the lace stitching and the hair is amazing and I just, uh, I have to say, when I showed, when that thing showed up on my screen, I just kind of stopped, and I'm sure my draw was dropping, but, um, boy, she did a whale of a job. It's just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. It is. And yeah. it's worth keeping in mind that there is the final queen in the Gay and Rogers series that's coming out in August. probably the next, yeah, I think, I think August 8th, but don't quote me on that, first couple of weeks of August. Yep, and Gay Ann Rogers will be back in two weeks with us to yeah. talk about that very, her last mm-hmm. queen, yes. So we'll have her again. Um, yeah. A, a short turnaround repeat for a guest, but uh, we got to learn about this thing. It so. is, but you know what, this, this is a good queen, though, so I'm really excited about it. Yep, so that's coming up. But uh, a picture, so if, if you uh, listen on a podcast app, go to our website, wetalkfiber.com, to see a picture of... Victoria Becker's Queen Elizabeth I, assuming Victoria is kind enough to give me permission to use the photo. Yes. I asked her I asked her very nicely. Please and thank you and everything. So let's hope. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure she won't mind us bragging about her. I hope not. I hope not to. And then this popped up. Now, this to me, this is one of the coolest things in needlework because I've seen this this suggested before, but one of the coolest things in needlework because it is probably the only time that we will talk about ammunition boxes and stitching. <gasps> I know. I saw your note about this, and I'm so excited. Yes. Now, this is you know other people have mentioned it, but this just popped up. Jo- Rachel Joy Leaf on I think it was Stitch Mania. Not sure. Uh, listed the bullet box, the ammo box that she bought uh, for storing crinic spools. 
And uh, like I said, this has been suggested before, but it's a seven millimeter West Winchester short mag <laughs> ammo box. <laughs> I love it. Okay, this is needlework, but we're gonna we're gonna buy go to the gun store and buy a seven millimeter Winchester short mag ammo box flip top. Uh, you can order it. I'll put a link so you can order it. Uh, Do you have to buy? So it clearly, uh, okay. So I'm from New York, which is a very blue state. I, I know nothing about ammunition, and we don't live in a place where hunting is a thing. And deer walk within two feet of my bedroom window on a regular basis. So, um, do you have to buy the box? I would think that the box would kind of come free with the ammo. Well, but if you load your own ammo, not an right. uncommon if thing. You make, if you make like, your own shotgun shells. Yes, or bullets, so, either one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is this is this is Christine's not area of expertise. Yeah. Oh, no, oh, that's it's not uncommon. It's people, explosive. people, yeah, people who shoot a lot, target or otherwise, mm -hmm. uh, uh, hunting. It's not uncommon for them to make their own shotgun shells or make their own bullets, and okay. you know, and have their own little uh, quirks about how they like it, how much. How much uh, sh um, gunpowder yeah, goes that, in, you know, those things. Oh, yeah, that's that very common. Ton, that makes a ton of sense. And then, right, because when I first saw your your note about it, I, I have several friends who are either ex-military or just, you know, like shooting skeet or things like that. And my first thought was, oh, great. They must have, you know, a ton of ammo boxes hanging around that I can just swipe from them. But now I'm thinking about it and, you know, the tiny, you know, little bit of information I know about ammo. Um, I was thinking about it. Yeah, a shotgun shell is about the size of a Krynix tool. So, yeah, a regular bullet like a twenty two wouldn't do it. You would no. need a shotgun shell box. Right. But do they come in boxes? Like I really am. Like oh yeah, yeah. Oh sure, of course. If you go buy an, a, a bunch of Winchester bullets or shotgun shells, yeah, yeah they, they, don't, they don't come in a bag, do they? No, no, no. <laughs> They're in a nice, neat cardboard box. Yeah. Yeah, a bag of like. That's no, no. Explosives dangling around is probably not a yeah, good no. idea. But uh, no, and, and I would venture that serious target shooters probably load all their own ammunition. Because that way they know that every single bullet is, you know, if, if something goes wrong and it's the bullet's fault, then it's their fault, not some machine in some right. factory. So, right. yeah. But, well, um, and see if somebody has like spare ones. Yeah. You never know. But I mean, four bucks. So this thing is four bucks. Yeah, even so. Yeah. So, so here's, here's my challenge to all the stitchers. Take a bunch, like a fistful of Krynic thread spools, and go to a gun and ammo store. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Huh? Can you see that? Oh, I, you know what, though? I think it would totally work. Because I think if you walked in with a bunch of thread as a woman, so this is the, the reverse equivalent of walking into, well, no, it's actually the same of walking into Home Depot in a skirt, right. which is what I always used to do. And, but then I actually knew what I was talking about. This would be, this is like walking into the tire store as a woman. Yep. This is yep. what, what they call playing the girl card. Yep. Which I rarely do, <laughs> but I think I might do it in this case just for, just for entertainment purpose, oh, purposes. Oh, that is pure entertainment. It's pure and, entertainment. You walk in with a bag of Krynic spools and say, I need a box to put these in. Yeah, yeah. So so my friend who shoots skeet said that uh, that uh, the, the boxes that you have for shotgun shells would fit my thread that I stitch, um, you know, needlepoint with perfectly. So do you have something that you could give me that these would fit in? Perfectly, and if you wear like a sundress, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. There you go. And I'm not even, <laughs> and honestly, I'm not even talking about a revealing sundress. It's not about that at all. It's it's just about being a girl. Yep. 
sandals, flower, yellowed, sundress. Yeah, the whole yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's, it's being the opposite of being. <laughs> so I'm talking about being the opposite of me pulling up on my motorcycle and asking the question because that would be different. Yep. I, I, right. And you'd have a real nice purse with you and yeah, the whole bit. Yep. Yeah. And then you walk. Yeah, and in this case, you walk in and say, "I need, I need an ammo box for seven millimeter Winchester short magnums. Got any?" <laughs> but, you, but you have to write it down on a piece of paper. Yeah, yeah, yep. And then and then pull out your threads. Well, I'm going to put these in there. I want I want to make right. sure they'll fit. <laughs> you have to have a bag of them. Right. Oh yeah, you got to have a bag. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then, and then it, it almost, it almost begs you having like a piece of something you've stitched, like very, very tasty, <laughs> right? Like, like six cats standing, you know, sitting <laughs> on a fence with their tails dangling down, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. Like I want to, I want, this is the kind of thing. And I hang them in my bathroom and I stitch them and yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if I could actually do it. I think it's great weekend fun. That's a that's a great Saturday morning. Three or four women, you go out for breakfast and you go to an ammo store. I think that's a great Saturday yeah. morning right okay, there. Okay, that that's the key. It's doing it as a group. I don't yeah. I don't know if Cuz you'll scare them. Four women walking into a gun store. <laughs> right? Right? They'll scare them. Do you think you'd scare them? <laughs> yeah, I think you would. Four women walking into a gun store. Uh, uh, bah, 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 yeah, yeah. You get a lot of uh, bah, bah, yeah. Oh yeah, I guarantee it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. That is my challenge. I yep. am going to see if I can scare a man in a gun store. Yeah. Oh, w- uh, you walk in, sundress, purse, bag full of chronic thread, and ask for a seven millimeter Magnum box, and then because you want to put those in there, I, the guy will. The guy will be a mess. <laughs> them off my, off their game that's, yeah. that's he'll be a mess for a week i guarantee it yeah because the truth of it is <laughs> i i could show up on a motorcycle i know think about it's you with, yeah think about you sundress on a motorcycle to an ammo store <laughs> no no i can't no all those things don't fit together right because i could do it one way or the other i could do motorcycle and tattoos <laughs> and everything and then you wouldn't bat an eye and i would be just a you know one other customer or I could show up in in you know a pretty flowery dress, and I would be so incongruous to the environment that it would you would not have any idea what was going on. Mess them up for a week, guaranteed. <laughs> I yeah, I don't know. It's worth I it. I I think the the experience might be worth it. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Happens. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. I'm game. I'll do it. Do it. Now, okay, now let's take the other side. If I walk in and ask for the same thing and break out a bag of chronic thread. Yeah. Well, neither, either way, they're going to make you pay for it. Right. I'll, I'll just order online. <laughs> right. The only question is, are, are they going to give me, like, whatever they have, like, in the back? you know, hanging around for free. That's, that's really the only game. The game here is just what, what exactly is going to happen because. Mess them up for a week. Absolutely. Or or nothing or nothing. It could be, (laughs) nothing could happen at all. I think it depends on where you live too. (laughs) I think if you live in Texas, it it would go a totally different way. Yeah. Likely. I don't think it, I don't, it bad an eye. I, I don't know. I don't know. That's the challenge. Let's hear from people. <laughs> Head to ammo stores with your Krynic bag. Let's hear from people. All right. That's that's the maybe we need a a, a fiber talk Facebook poll. Yep. I walked into an ammo store with a Krynic with a bag of Krynic, and this was this was the result. <laughs> yep. Got to hear. Got to hear the stories. Yep. <laughs> Uh huh. So there we have it, right there. Mm-hmm. I think it'd be fantastic. Yep. I I, uh, I hope this doesn't end badly. No, no. Good entertainment all the way around. <laughs> yep. Yep. 
Excellent stuff. Yeah. <sighs> Seven millimeter Winchester short mag flip top ammo box. Mm -hmm. That's the only kind. 50 round. Was it government 50 round plastic? Well, I, I mean, that's one that was suggested. I'm sure that many people make a box that will hold that particular bullet. But this one is MTM as the manufacturer, MidwayUSA.com. But uh, I'm sure there's a, a bunch of people. And I'm sure, like any hobby, you can get a plastic box for 4 bucks, or you can get a hand-rubbed mahogany box for $400 to hold the same right. bullets. You know that. Okay. Okay, so so again, dumb dumb non gun person question. Um, if you knew someone in the military, I mean, really, this is a dumb question. They don't use shotguns, do they? Mm, I don't think so. So it wouldn't be like a military surplus kind of thing. Oh no, I wouldn't go there. No, no, guns and ammo, firing they, range. They would. They wouldn't have the kind of bullets that that would be that size and shape yeah I, I don't know my bullets see this is why i would be convincing in the sundress because i literally i i really don't know the answer to these questions. guns and ammo store wherever they sell guns have a shooting range guns and ammo store that's where you walk in not not army surplus no all right no yep i i, I gotta hear stories people gotta do it i gotta hear stories i'll do it okay counting on you all right. <laughs> Counting on you. All right. So Rachel Joy Leaf has provided us with the opportunity for good entertainment and a solution to storing chronic thread. Yes, actually, that, that's really the, the goal right. here. Yeah. Let's not forget there's a there's a plus on the other end of this thing in that we uh, don't have chronic thread just piled in a box somewhere. No, because I'm sitting here actually next to a pile of about 12 spools of it, and there's really no good way to store yep. them. Thought of you immediately when I saw this. Oh, Christine needs to have a box for these. I do. Yep, for the thread. Yep. So there we have it. There's our weekend entertainment right there. Thank you. Christine's Adventures in the Gun Store. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Great. Yep. Yep, that makes sense. Perfect sense on fiber talk. That's right. Okay, that's going to be it right there. Thank you, Rachel Joy Leaf. We appreciate it. Sunday, Trisha Rothoff of Three Oil. Three Oil. Oh, man. I need a new job. Trisha Rothoff, Three Owl Threads. Probably the only person that I've ever heard from or we've ever heard from who built a business purely on the suggestion of things from, from friends. Yes. Yes. Friends suggest things, she does them, builds them into her business, and she's got something going. So, fun chat with her. And if you're doing Sarah Brazier, people are cooking right along on that thing. People other than me are cooking right along. And the Sarah Brazier stitch along, uh, we're up to 744 or 5 members now. That and, is insane. Yes. And, oh, that's right. Somebody asked how many people were stitching in hand. Ten people so far have said they're stitching Sarah Brazier in hand. Now, that's a that's a 30, at, at 40 count, that's a 30 by 30 inch piece of linen. And ten people are doing it in hand because that's the way they do them. I'm impressed. I'll tell you, I, I'm on a scroll frame and I am I am five minutes and about... Uh, yeah, five minutes from throwing the thing across the room um, <laughs> before I'm ready to throw it into a hoop. Okay. Because I, I can't get the tension that I want. And, and I think it's simply because I don't have a scroll frame wide enough. Oh, yeah, that could be. Yeah. Yeah. So I may end up moving the whole thing. Uh, that said, I have learned everything there, well, maybe not everything, but I have learned very many things there is to know about how to tweak your scroll frame <laughs> to get the best tension you can. And I can tell you lots and lots of ways to get more tension out of your scroll frame, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. Okay. Well, more infrastructure may be, you may have to just purchase more infrastructure. I, I have all the hoops. 
I have all. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're just, just going to go right to hoop, huh? Well, you know, honestly, what I may do, which is, it sounds ridiculous, um, but just as an, ex this whole piece is one giant experiment for me. It's, it's my way of testing everything and finding all the ways to do things wrong <laughs> so that I can spare, right. That was the segment that we were going right. to do last week, wasn't it? Right. Um, mm -hmm. it, so we'll save it for next time, but all, all the ways to go, nope, that didn't work. So what I may do before I take it out of the scroll frame, because it's, it's kind of a, it's a job to put it in the frame. Um, it's just to loosen the tension because the piece is 5,000 feet long. Um, <laughs> I can just actually just loosen the tension out of it and put it in a hoop while it's still in the frame and see how it stitches on a hoop before I take it off the frame. And if it works out well, then I'll just take it off the frame. Does that make sense? Oh, I, I followed you. I followed you. <laughs> it, yeah. It's going to look ridiculous. I followed but, you, and I'll pay big money to watch this happen. But uh... <laughs> no, before I before I unstitch it, because right now it's stitched on four sides into the frame. So before I unstitch it, I want to see how I feel about it being in a hoop, because I don't want it to distort, and I don't want it, all of the things that we always talk about. You know, the sort of the cons of using an embroidery hoop i kind of want to try it first before i commit to it um so I, I can just loosen it out of the frame without unstitching it yes. and try it out and if i like it then i might just put it in and the the other benefit is it's much more portable yes ton, ton of people stitching in a hoop though Ton of people in the stitch along doing using a hoop. That's, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I, I might actually, I might actually do that. It's not so, like you're breaking new ground here. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. No. Yep. So we'll see. Okay, and so next week we're going to have that report. All the things to not do. How you did well? Not at all. <laughs> or whatever that was. Yeah. Yeah, that. I'm not afraid to fail. I just fail, fail quickly. Yes. Get it over with. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> All right. That's it now. For sure. That's it. We're done. Yes. Yes. Take Trisha care. wrote Trisha wrote Hoff Sunday. We'll be back Wednesday with more of this whatever it is. Thanks for listening. Take care.